Golden founder at Golden Artist Colors. Joined with? Hi, I'm Ulysses Jackson, a senior formulator here at Golden Artist Colors. So we're glad to have so many of you folks join us on this Facebook Live as we talk about owning, owning our mistakes. Obviously, we are really proud about presenting our uh, quality of our materials and do a lot of work behind the scenes to make sure the things that you get are uh, perfect when they arrive. But this is not the story that we're going to be sharing today. Today we're going to be sharing about those things when stuff goes awry and not, not as, as expected. So uh, you've probably got the messages uh, about a major recall that we had on about 16 products. And uh, I would, uh, we have a wonderful response from our customers recognizing that things do happen. And when product doesn't meet your needs, the ability to contact us and, and share that. These are gifts that you folks give us. We like to catch these things internally before anybody might see these kinds of errors, but. And we uh, fortunately do most of the time. <laughs> you know, fortunately, <laughs> most of the time. But every now and then, something gets a little strange, mm -hmm. you know? So last two years, everyone might have understood we're a little funny in the world. And so some things got out there that we later found we wanted to make mm -hmm. sure came back. Right. Yeah. So the, uh, yeah, with, through COVID, through all that period of a lot of material changes and supplier changes and such, we had materials that, that uh, uh, provoked some really major changes, uh, significant problems in our product quality. And uh, we received first complaints from artists who shared their product was, was thickening. And we take those things, obviously, to heart. And we have a significant program to be able to take a look at, at those we call NCRs, but maybe you can explain what an NCR is, Ulysses. Yeah, sure. So NCR stands for a non-conformance report. So that's any time an artist has a product that doesn't meet their expectations. You know, it's our goal. We have a replacement guarantee. We want artists to just be able to open the product and go, do what you do best, make art. And so if something's off, we want you to reach out to us. You'll get in touch with our material application team. They'll interact with you on what's going on. We'll usually ask for some details, the batch code that can be found on the product. Uh, depends on if it's a jar or a tube, where you can find that, but they'll certainly walk you through that. And then um, they will take relevant information. Often we'll ask for a picture or see what you're experiencing. We have retained samples. Maybe we should so show some retained samples, yes, Mark? Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, as a company, Mark, <laughs> do we save stuff? We save uh, way too many things, but we recognize that we do have to go back. And artists, how long do you expect your paints to last on your shelf? Um, so we've been in business for now 40, going on 43 years this yeah. June. And Pretty uh, wild. So if we can get the overhead shot here, let me bring these back in a little bit. So I just went upstairs and found some paint. So this one um, is from 1980, right? So yeah. fluid paint made in 1980, and let's see how we're doing in here. So there's a little bit of separation, but overall, that is still some nice fluid paint. Those are some of the first experimental products we made over the fluid, fluid colors. Oh, interesting. Yep. Yeah, that was, um, for people watching, they might like to know that's before I was born. You know. Thank you. My family <laughs> didn't start using golden paint until 1986, which is when I started using golden paint, uh, so a few years there. Um, and so then we can come up in time. Let's look at some heavy body. So this is 94 now, some heavy body. Uh, well, there's a little skin that sometimes happens in the threads, just a little drying out. That's not really a product issue with the paint. But let's take a look at the paint here. Uh, so this one looks really great. This is, in our rating system, this would be uh, RCR A, C, and C, which stands for rheology creamy, no separation, and no settling on the bottom. So that's not too shabby for 94. Um, let's jump up. So 2003, now definitely I was born here. This is the year I started working with Golden. It's when we, we got to hang out in person more. Absolutely. Yeah. Mark's known my family and me since, well, since pretty much the beginning. Yes, yeah. So okay, let's look at, so this is now 20 year old paint and that's looking pretty good. Yeah, that is also RCR, mm -hmm. ACNC, rheology, creamy, no separation. And then we'll just jump forward in time to, you know, what we'd expect now. So I have, you know, our retained samples, we, you know, label them with a lot code, 
the year it's made. We have the, the product name. I'm doing this backwards because, okay, <laughs> here we are. So we have just relevant information that this would be where we would look up something of an artist called in with a concern, right? And so let's open that up. And yeah, I mean, this is A plus heavy body paint. So this is what we want artists to experience when they open their containers. And fortunately, you know, over the many millions of containers we fill a year, that's most of what we get, right? Yeah, and all those, are, look, there's a variation in products. Uh, uh, there would be a variation in uh, heavy body from different consistencies from a, uh, a heavy to a slightly heavier, and that's pretty normal across uh, almost all the spectrums of the different colors we make and the different brands, Williamsburg, right. as well as all the, ac all the acrylic. So there is always some, some variation, but each yeah. color, uh, we try to dial in very specifically that range of, of viscosity of how it should look. Right, uh, based on the personality of the pigment, right? Certain pigments like a phthalo versus a, an earth color might have very different natural rheologies or, mm -hmm. or feels. But that's not why they're here, Ulysses. That's uh, not why show, they're here. Show the... Yeah. Uh, show so them. back to the NCR <laughs> and, uh, and why we're here today, right? So let's do an overhead of some of the, some of the blooper reels. So these are things that we, we hate to see. These would be bad days at the office, right? So uh, this is what's supposed to be a heavy body carbon black. And I'm going to use a stiffer, more of an oyster shucker of a palette knife here <laughs> and pull this out. And you can see this is a very tar-like material. It just increased in viscosity exponentially. So, <laughs> I mean, the good news is, is if an artist used this product, it, it didn't go bad right away. It took some time, right? So if an artist used that product when it was first made, mm -hmm. it's fine in the painting, right? There's no risk to the, the artwork. I think that's it's really important to share is, although the product has thickened over time using it, uh, there is no problem with the actual artwork that was created with it. Right, so this is one where we you know, reached out, mm -hmm. wanted to get those, those products back, and we've had a really nice response of some artists saying, you know, thank you, that was really unexpected mm -hmm. to get that, and then let me borrow that paper towel, please, great. And we'll also look at another one that this product is on, you know, it's a very viscous product. So this is, let me do it right way again, extra heavy gel gloss. So it's one of our thickest products to start with, um, and because of that, it's right on the edge of stability. Uh, but this one went pretty much to what we call in the lab a SRM or solid rubbery mass. <laughs> so there's If a you solid like to paint with solid rubbery masses, please keep your uh, defective paint. They right, if, if you could <laughs> maybe mix this with some medium or get it to stick, <laughs> that, would, that would be okay. But um, we'd also prefer to get you a replacement. <laughs> so um, I see a... a hand off camera. So what's hi. going on there? Hey, so Allison. hi everyone, this is Allison. Um, so you just jogged my memory about something we talked about when we were preparing for this event. Okay. And that sometimes what we would consider a mistake is actually something that does end up delighting an artist. Um, and so we actually had an artist write into us today about, <laughs> oh, I've got paints, but I love to use rubbery gelatinous products in my work. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit more about yeah. that? Well, we actually have a, a seconds program where oftentimes we put aside products that don't meet our, our specs, kind of grainy, or uh, they have other, other problems, other issues. And uh, sometimes we send those products out, an artist tries it, and says, oh, I love that grainy quality, or I love that really thickened material, right. or I love yeah. the way it cracked. Typically, we can't do that again. Um, yeah. It <laughs> yeah. We try to really <laughs> avoid those, those mistakes. We do. And <laughs> once again, fortunately, we do most of the time. But yeah, a lot of those seconds are end of the run. You know, right at the very end of the run, there might be a little bit of material left over that we could either dispose of in a landfill, but it's still, other than being slightly off, it's still highly usable. So we do like to, you know, support groups that you know, have some economical need for some, some paint. Mm -hmm. um, some of those artists, yeah, I mean, they, you know, we've had certain artists reach out over the years who like the bloopers reel. <laughs> we also have the inverse, where we see something as a defect in a product. So maybe we'll have a product that we pour out and there's a surface defect, like a craze, which is when the, the skin kind of pulls back and gives you some texture. And then we'll fix that with a, a tweak to the formula. 
and then artists will contact us and say, well, I, you know, it's not doing the thing anymore. What, what <laughs> happened? And then we'll, you know, work with them to, of course, you know, assist their needs. Mm -hmm. but it's, it's one of those funny things where, you know, we're trying to offer, you know, a perfect paint film. And sometimes in that organic, natural, accidental is where the artist finds something exciting. A space that really works for them that had to do with something that we weren't formulating for, but worked for them. So if we made a slight change in the product, all of a sudden um, uh, the product's no longer no longer working as they, they expected. So thankfully Ulysses uh, pr often provides custom solutions for those those artists to be able to get back to where they were, they were. if we can manage. If we can, yeah, yeah. if, if we ha still have access mm -hmm. to the raw materials. But So we diverted a little from the NCR topic. So after the artist contacts, that's so NCR, once again, that's the non-conformance reports. So if you have an issue, reach out to MAS. They will then take your information and send it down to the lab where we would go get one of those retained samples. So we keep many years at the ready up in, in uh, above the lab. We keep about eight years to where we can easily access. And then we also keep many more years in a warehouse where we can go deeper. And we like to periodically check those, usually at one, three, five, and eight years and log that data. So fortunately, it allows us a very quick turnaround if someone does have something that's unusual to where we can compare their product stored in maybe not the most ideal conditions versus our product that we know how it was handled. And is, as long as you know, that matches up, uh, we'll just start researching what may occur. Sometimes the artist product doesn't match our retain. Our retain might look fine, the artist product might look a little funny, and we'll actually ask for that material to come back at our cost. So we'll replace the material to the artist and then we'll get that tube or jar back so we can do a little bit more analysis in the lab to see, you know, what happened. Mm -hmm. And it's always interesting. So we, we try to process those as quick as possible and get the feedback to the yeah. artists and loop back to the material application specialists. I think specialists. that's one of the things our material application specialists, when they receive those gifts from artists that something went awry, something didn't work or product failed, uh, to be able to get out a replacement product. Uh, if we think a replacement product will work, sometimes it's just the artist is using the wrong material and uh, in a way that wasn't intended. So it's difficult to make those, you know, solve all of those, of, of those problems. The yeah. I see another. Was Just a comment on replacement. So um, in the event description or your video description, depending on where you're watching, um, because we do have some recalls that we recently announced, we've tried to make this process of letting us know about these issues as easy as possible. And so if you click on that, link in the event description, it will take you to a landing page that has links to all of our current recalls. And you can find all of the information there. You can learn whether or not you have one of these products mm -hmm. based on the batch code or the color that we're talking about. And then you can easily fill in your information so that we can process that for you as quickly as possible. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, we tried to make that process easy, especially on those products that we knew eventually were going to fail to become that rubbery, that rubbery mass that Ulysses, that Ulysses showed. Let me move to a, another, un, un, oh thanks Todd, uh, maybe yeah. another, another picture of this sculptural, uh, of this sculptural <laughs> a rubbery mess. It's a yeah. very, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> almost looks like marble. I, I want to talk about uh, a, I would call it more of a, a self-inflicted uh, problem, you know, where we have the changes in raw materials coming through COVID and supply changes. That was a difficult thing to manage. Um, uh, and we did, uh, I think, it really exceedingly well with uh, many of our suppliers, but self-inflicted uh, damage. We, we uh, got some wonderful gifts from customers who used uh, the old tube cap, the, these gnarled uh, threads on the tube. Uh, do you have a picture of, of those caps, the old caps? Uh, the caps were breaking, but also because they were so sharp, People were having it, uh, they were actually cutting their, their fingers or scraping their fingers and uh, impossible to, to open up. So we said, you know what, we can devise a plan. It took about a year and a half of work and we had many different uh, uh, engineers internally working on trying to create a solution for this, knowing that we could get away from this, this gnarled cap to something more successful. We measured pressure on the hand to be able to open the product. We thought maybe some of the failures that were occurring in this were caused by people over-torquing the lid and, and then, it, then it cracking. 
So we said, you know what, not only will we try to design a new cap, but we're also gonna make a tool for those folks to be able to help them open up the cap so if they got stuck, they could, they could open up, the, open up the, the, uh, the, the paint. So it was uh, trying to solve a problem uh, before maybe we actually understood all of the, uh, the issues around, the, around the, the paint. But yeah, the, the gripper uh, was a great success. It opens up all different brands of, of tubes, which is pretty wonderful. Uh, so the solution we came up with was uh, developing a different type of, of, nor of, of cap. And uh, after about a year and a half of work, we realized that a gnarled, changing from the gnarled design to like a, a, a more of a clover leaf or, or pattern would reduce the, the pressure on, on people's hands. It would also fit our new gripper to be able to open up the, the tube. And, uh, and we did a lot of torque testing to prove out that no one, even if you over torqued this tube, the cap wouldn't break. That would have been great if, uh, if that was the solution. But the first solution was using a plastic that eventually failed. And we didn't see the failure until it was out it took some age to develop, so we thought we were good. We, we did this improvement. At first, we were thrilled it's easier to open the tubes. Um, we, we come out with the gripper tool, which is really uh, you know, super useful in the studio for giving you that leverage without damaging the cap. You know, if you use pliers or something like that, you start to deform the cap. So, so you know, we, were, we were feeling pretty good. <laughs> pretty proud of ourselves. Pretty, yeah. pretty <laughs> proud. And then a little age happened, and we started getting reports from the field of yeah, like this picture of cracks in the neck. And at first we did problem solve thinking, okay, did we somehow get the mold wrong, et cetera. And, and after a lot of analysis, it, it did come down to the Actually, plastic. Right, but we brittle. did, in the first failures, we did beef up the neck to give it more material thinking, okay, it's just people are still torquing it too hard and let's beef up that neck yeah. and make it. We tried that. Yeah. And then we thought we were good. Yes. And then we weren't. And then we weren't. <laughs> and now, are we? And now we finally are. <laughs> with, with the new cap, we, we went to yeah. gray so people wouldn't confuse it with the, with the old white cap that was failing and, uh, and to be able to create a, a solution to this. But I, I think uh, it was a great learning experience mm -hmm. with that, uh, for us all that, uh, that we needed to be able to uh, uh, work through this in a, a more yeah. detailed Absolutely. Way. And so now that we have um, a cap solution solved, we also do send out a fair amount of, of caps, right? So if someone does have an older tube that has a cracked cap and the paint still seems good, uh, please get in touch with us. We'd love to get you some caps to make sure that's airtight and your paint will stay good as new. And I see Allison has another comment for mm -hmm. us. Yeah, so the same web page that we were talking about that has all the links to the recalls also has a link to the forum where you can request replacement caps if you need them. And we, um, I think that we put that information out almost two and a half years ago about the craft caps. And wow. we are still receiving requests from artists every week looking for replacement caps. So um, don't think just because a recall is old or um, you know you have a product that's old and we haven't talked about it for a while, it's still, we will still help you through that issue mm -hmm. replace those caps you know if you find thickened acrylic product a year from now you can still reach out to us to I, let us know I think that about that's that. a really a good point Allison and it's around uh, not just the recall products or the caps but when you find a product um, that isn't working as you as you expected that it's it's grainy or it is uh, thickened up beyond beyond use or dried up if you've Look, I'll, we'll ask you, did you take care of, of the product? Did you close the jar after use? Um, was it, you know, in, did you leave it in the garage freezing and thawing over multiple winters? Um, uh, you know, with any due care of a product, if you find that it isn't performing as, as expected, please contact our, our MAS team to be able to uh, give us that gift, give us that chance to uh, help make it, make it right. While you have a tube in front of you, um, can mm -hmm. you show artists where to locate the batch code? Absolutely. Because sometimes when um, oh. we have product that's mm -hmm. not performing correctly, it's, it's certain batches of product that are not doing the right thing. Yes. So can so you show them where those codes right. are? So that one here we can probably, that 
that's probably pretty clear to the viewer. So this one is X 00201735, right? So you can see that. And if this is a little hard for your eyes to see, sometimes you can also take a, a marker, like a Sharpie, or I just have a red one here. You can actually kind of highlight it that way too to get a little more information. Um, so that would help get us, you know, but then we can look at our material variants for that product and see what might be going on. And on a jar, we have a jar here, and depends on the time period, they can be on two places. Sometimes, all right, sometimes they can be on the bottom. So this one is 374519. Um, and sometimes it can be on the side, printed somewhere on the side of the container, right? So check either the side or the bottom, and you should see some form of lot code that would really greatly assist us in determining what might be going on. <clears throat> Should we talk about the weird corrosion one we get from time to time? Oh, I think that would be, that would be a great one to, to share. Can you show uh, 11? Thanks, There Bob. we are. Right, so this one is, we see this very sporadically. Um, so basically what's happening is, uh, this is black iron oxide, uh, Mars black. And it, it's funny because this one I've seen, even when I was a kid, we would, we would see this periodically. So inside of an aluminum tube, it's pre-coated with a polyester coating. It's actually sprayed twice with polyester coating. And that can get most of the way into the tube, but there's a little bit in the top of the threads where there's a, a void. And a reactive pigment like a Mars Black or sometimes in the open colors we've seen it happen, the aluminum can slightly react with the, the water, the alkaline environment, and basically make aluminum oxide. Certainly unsightly, not really detrimental to the product. You can, you can just clean it off, squeeze out some paint, and keep going if you feel comfortable with that. However, if you don't for any reason, we'd love to get you a replacement of that product as well. So that's an interesting one where we do our best to coat the inside of the tube, but just because it's a sprayed coating, it can't completely envelop that cap sometimes. And uh, we can see this defect with just a few products. And, and it's one we just want people to be aware of, that it's, it's not really a... It's not really a, a damage to the paint. It's just a surface anomaly and we can get rid of that and keep going or replace it. But I think for some folks it, they think it's mold on the on the paint but it, it is just a corrosion product yeah, from, aluminum from the oxide. tube. Yep. It's a inert metal solid. Mm. Great. So that was everything, all the epic failures we wanted to talk about today and how sometimes you know um, those aren't failures in the eyes of artists and how much we appreciate artists' feedback. Great. So before we go, though, just a couple of reminders for everyone. Um, if you joined late, no worries. This has been recorded, so you can watch at your mm -hmm. convenience. Uh, you just come to our YouTube channel or our Facebook page and find us recording. Um, Are there any questions from the, from the uh, audience? So I've thrown a couple of those out. The batch code was one of them. We can mm -hmm. check in and see if there was another. Mm -hmm. Anything else? While we're looking at that, I also want to remind, since it was just flashed on the screen, if you have any questions, contact us at help at goldenpaints.com. Our material application specialist will love to chat about your projects. Uh, so it's not necessarily just failures. It's usually <laughs> we'd love to talk to you before you do something so that we can make sure you have the best up-to-date technical mm -hmm. information. So we get lots of contacts on mural. It's mural season now. A lot of people are getting outside and doing some exciting stuff there. Uh, we get lots of calls on varnishing, finishing paintings, packing and shipping. You name it, we've probably gotten a call on it. We get around, how many calls do we get a year? Uh, like emails and phone calls between 10 and uh, 12,000 a year. So, so a lot of great contacts, a lot of great gifts and interactions. Mm -hmm. And so we'd love to hear from you mm -hmm. whenever we can. Um, the paint bar is still open. So Pints from the Paint Bar, if you haven't seen that announcement, is a social video. Uh, program that we're running. So if you have a question for Golden, it can be about anything related to Golden, products, the company, you name it, um, and you'd be willing to record a video to ask your question, you can go to goldenpaints.com slash pints and submit your video question there. And if we choose your video, um, we will give you a pint of paint. And Ulysses has been working really hard on responding to those. And he's he's Ben, our, it's our always a pleasure. A There's some great us. questions, and so please do keep coming them, you know, bringing them to us, and we want to interact with you. Great. Yeah. Well, we uh, 
thank you all for uh, joining us. And please, don't hesitate to contact the company. Uh, uh, tell us about what you're doing. Tell us about what you're excited about, materials you're excited about, or just questions that you have. Know that there's a team of people that love to uh, work, with, work with artists. Uh, it's a joy. Thank you all.